skittles welcome back to my channel my name is dr Arnadi Thira. you and if you'd like so anyway i'm having a really bad breakout at the moment but that is not what we're focused on today today's video is for my medics um this is a video i've been meaning to make for a very long time um but yeah this week specifically i've just been be i've just been feeling very inspired to just um sit and film this for you guys i think it's also just seeing how i'm literally almost at the end of my internship year and really realizing like how far i've come what a long way i've come you know i'm, I'm just i'm just blown away literally i have moments where i just feel like i'm having an, uh, an outer body experience where i'm just seeing a patient prescribing diagnosing calling for like imaging and just in the mode and i'm just like is this even you like is this even me like literally pinch me moments um and i think the reason i know a lot of people are thinking why is it such a big deal for you i mean you went through med school now you're doing internship of course you have to get to a point where you're you know competent the reason why it's so mind-blowing for me is because so not only am i foreign trained you know not only did i study in china which already has a lot of stigma because people feel like the quality of education is not up to par and all of that but over and above that i've studied in a foreign language when i tell you guys i have literally been through it i mean i've been through it and um in as much as i'd like to just pin all the blame on the fact that i am female the fact that i am from china the fact that i studied in chinese i have to take responsibility and realize that a lot of the things that i struggle with now i really could have avoided if i put in the work earlier which I didn't. So as you can see by the title of this video, today's video will be me just going through some of the things that I made a mistake um, in, some of the things I could have done better, and just to share them with you and be very transparent with you so that you don't repeat the same mistakes, especially if you're training in these big three countries in a foreign language. So maybe in Chinese, maybe in um, Russian, maybe in Spanish. Um, okay, so as usual, I have my list because we don't want to be spiraling off topic first things first if you're watching this and you're trying to decide if you should study medicine in china in chinese i would say to you if you don't have to don't if you don't have to study in chinese don't study in chinese you can go to china but maybe study in english please do not take the risk of studying in chinese if you don't have to and what i mean by if you don't have to if it's not a scholarship because of course a scholarship is a very attractive thing like it's very difficult to just look at a scholarship and say screw it even though i've done that before in my life but we'll speak about that in another video but yeah scholarships are great opportunities you get one hop onto it because those are hard to come by so if that's the case with you that's fine you know if i if i got on that scholarship and i survived so can you but if it's a situation where because i know people who go to china and study in english and they're self-sponsored they study in chinese and they're self-sponsored and they study in chinese only because it's a few thousands cheaper please don't do that you'll regret it it's not worth it it's painful don't put yourself through that it's just not worth it it's just not think about it it's not practical learning such such a deep intertwined intricate meticulous course in a language you've only spoken for 10 months it doesn't make practical sense yes we've survived but as i'm telling you we've had to suffer there's been a great price to pay and if you don't have to go through that just don't go through it that's my advice so that's number one okay number two as soon as you, st you start your course okay the first year of medicine is the first year of the chinese scholarship program that i was on is basically language so for that one, I'll just say 100% devote yourself to getting your Chinese on lock. Like focus, 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 um, you know, practice, make sure you have, push yourself to a point where you can literally speak Chinese above what is expected of you, above average. Literally hop into the accent and whatever, above average. Don't settle for the, the 
you know the basic chinese that everybody else is speaking literally get your accents get everything on point so that when you're actually stuck in the classroom with a hundred chinese you can actually hear what's going on and you can follow on in the lessons so as soon as that's over first semester of actual medical school when you're doing your anatomy your blah 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 I know there's a lot to ask because of course it's a, lot, it's a lot of pressure because your exams are in Chinese so you really need to know your Chinese and you need, you need to practice your Chinese but start studying from English from the get-go from the get-go day one day one start, start learning your English um, and one of the things that I can advise you to do which initially I had places as, as a separate point but I think I can just put them together what you can do which I wish I had done I don't know why I hadn't thought of this while I was in med school make sure you liaise with the English medium classes um, the curriculum is not exactly the same like sometimes I remember we did our anatomy in one year they split the anatomy in two years or was it regional anatomy one of the anatomies they did in two years we didn't want in two semesters rather we did in one semester and we were done because the Chinese program is accelerated um, that's why it's cheaper so but for the most part the curriculums are the same when we're in semester one we're both doing chemistry math um which is calculus math anatomy what else do we do in first year in first semester i think the second semester is when we do biochemistry so essentially what i'm trying to say is for the most part we are on the same level so literally if it means getting the books that they have buy them on taobao okay um or might as well just buy really good books that there's blogs that recommend really really good books for you for specific topics in med school you can check those out buy those books the copy versions on tab are really usually very easy to get very affordable um get the ppts get the english medium ppts follow them copy them study with them you know don't alienate yourself as a chinese medium student because that's what we, that was the biggest mistake that i made the biggest mistake that i can say a lot of us chinese medium students made we really alienated ourselves in general like even for just even like school activities we were always sidelined and left out also because really we also didn't push we always allowed ourselves to be forgotten on the sidelines alienated isolated don't do that try and be as involved as possible with the english medium students um just so that you can stay on the same level study groups make study groups with them because they are the ones who are constantly exposed to english um what they are learning is is the closest you'll ever get to what you're expected to know once you get on the ground in a country where english is the main language that is spoken and then the third thing by year three get clinical by third year of medical school you should be getting clinical in the way you study in your approach to studying um what i mean by that is now you no longer let me be honest okay let me confess um what i used to do in med school and it has literally come back to bite me in the ass is that i used to cram pass and forget cpf method so the thing is because we were under a lot of pressure mostly if you're studying in chinese you're studying under scholarship right and chinese medium was strict in the sense that exams were very um what can i say thing is the rules that applied to chinese applied to us as chinese medium students it was so strict and so intense and like if you fail you failed because i know english medium sometimes they had this thing where they could negotiate with lecturers first of all in chinese medium you don't even know who your lecturer is <laughs> i'm just getting ptsd just thinking about med school for me you don't even know who your chi you don't even know where you can find it's just a mess so like if you've failed even if it's 59 percent, it's 59 percent, and you have to receive that exam you're gone you're gone and the thing is failing was literally the scariest thing because there was risk of being demoted and for us in chinese media in english medium if you're demoted sure your parents just pay more for us you lose your scholarship and that is not something that can be played with that is not something that yeah it's just the worst thing ever it's just this it's just a lot of pressure so a lot of us were under that pressure that you know what 
if at least I can make sure I pass my exams, like that is the bare minimum that I need to do, understand? And um, we used to just be so creative with trying to make sure we cram our Chinese, think about ways we can get it all into our heads and remember. Just try and imagine, try imagine those those sticks that you see on the billboard of a Chinese store, on the on the on the signage of a Chinese store. If you don't know Chinese, that to you just looks like rocket science. Now imagine having to use that to understand something as intricate as medicine. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it was just so much pressure on us. Like I'm really not trying to make excuses. Actually I am. But <laughs> it was just so much pressure because we had to be so creative. I remember we'd, I remember up to this day, some of the stuff that I used to cram, up to this day, that's the only thing that I, I can end up remembering, like how to remember. I just realized when I was, because currently I'm in surgery and I'm in ortho surgery. Well, now I'm in neuro, but like a week ago I was in ortho. Literally to remember um, that the radius is on um, the thumb size and that the ulna is on the pinky side. We had uh, uh, the character for 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 Alna, which is chi. So the Alna bone, Alna nerve, chi jing, chi. It's always that chi character. It looks like a P. I think I'll I'll try put it on the character on the on the screen. It looks like a P. So we had to cram that. Okay, that character resembles a P, and P stands for pinky. I'm just trying to show you guys. The processes that had to go into just passing a single exam we had to do so much cramming we had to be so creative so in doing that we don't realize that we are falling behind on the actual point of med school which is understanding pathology understanding the way the body works understanding you know the very basics anatomy we, we, we just completely missed out on that missed out on that because we were so focused on making sure we pass our exams, which was so impossible to pass, just so we don't lose our scholarships. If you had been doing cramp, pass and forget, now's the time to completely ditch cramp, pass and forget. Now you have to be doing cases because third year is sixth semester. So you're doing, you've done your pep affairs. I feel like pep affairs is medicine. Once you've done pep affairs, once you've done pharmacology and you've done your, your anatomy, you have, and of course pathology, you have medicine in your hand. Now you're able to identify pathology, identify, identify what is not normal about the body. Because now you understand the normal state of the body. Now you can identify what's not normal. What do I call this and how do I treat it? How can I, okay, maybe like imaging and stuff like that. You haven't gotten to that point. But at least you can comfortably be like, this is not supposed to be happening. What is this? What process is this? What's happening and how can I treat it? Do you understand? give you a random example by year three by sixth semester i should have been able to understand inflammation i should have been able to say the processes involved in inflammation are dilatation of the capillaries and then you have like um increased permeability and then you have you have your neutrophils and your monocytes blah 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 blah, blah. that's what causes the erythema the swelling the warm to touch the the, the, the red appearance blah 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 that's erythema so basically all those processes should have been in my head by sixth semester because that's pathophysiology, right? And I should be able, now that I have my pharmacology, I should be able to say, um, if it's inflammation that I'm trying to control, then I can give steroids or I can give NSAs. But that is stuff that I didn't know and I didn't even think in that pattern because all I ever cared about was just passing my exams. So when I say you should start thinking clinical, start studying clinical, I mean start studying cases. 24-year-old male presenting with this, yada, yada, yada. If you can start thinking in that pattern from year three, you are, you are, you stand a chance, like you stand a chance because the reason I'm saying year three specifically, not only am I looking at the curriculum that, you know, by then that's when you've done these and these subjects, but generally in Botswana and in a lot of medical schools in different countries as well, by year three, they're literally studying at the bedside. Like there's no more class. You're studying by the patient's bed, seeing what you're supposed to be knowing, not just reading it in books and not having a mental image of it. So by year three, I urge you guys switch to clinical and we're so lucky now we have YouTube okay we have youtube it, show, it can show you youtube is so and like youtube is so bad like you, <laughs> you see i'm even running out of words youtube is so 
exceptional that you can see actual presentations of patients like you can you, they give you a patient and you see you see them one of what the obstructive jaundice what you're looking for you see the ecteric sclera they show you the patient's lfts you are very very involved and you see what's happening it almost feels like you're there so utilize your youtube utilize um books there's a book uh, that i was th that i davidson's hundred cases that's the book that I, I'm a Davidson's fan. That's the book that I currently use now for my, um, for my clinical internship and stuff. But specifically, they had a book called Davidson. They have a book called Davidson's Hundred Cases, and essentially, it's just like clinical cases. Like this patient presents with this. What are you thinking? Multiple choice. It's, it feels like your USMLE type of vibe. If you've ever had a look at those kind of questions, so those are really, um, that's really the pattern of studying that you should adopt as soon as you get to year three and do it in english and i'll speak a little bit about that soon i'll speak a little bit about that soon subsequently which brings me to point number four as early as you can but i would advise year three because that's another mistake i made but as early as you can start doing electives back home go home get into the hospital learn okay because to be very honest, there's just things that you shouldn't be doing for the first time when you've already been employed. For example, I didn't know how to take blood. I didn't know how to insert an IV line. I didn't know what... I don't know what's in a full blood count. What's in a full blood panel? I didn't know. Okay? I didn't know... I just didn't know so many things, guys. I didn't know so many things and... It's just embarrassing to be fair, to say the very least. It's embarrassing and I don't think that needs to be the case. Um, and I'm just convinced that my purpose and calling in this world is to run so other people can walk. You know, it's to make things easy for the next person. Don't make the mistakes I made. As soon as you get a holiday, go home and practice. Okay? The good thing about countries like Botswana, I'm sure a lot of other countries in Africa as well, People here will be more than willing to engage you. Students here are literally treated as interns. Like they're given work to do. They're literally, you really feel enabled and motivated and empowered. Like you get work, you feel like you're part of the team, which is something you can never, ever, ever get in China. So as soon as you get an opportunity, holiday, not every holiday, of course, like you guys should travel, hey? You guys should have the best time of your lives because you're not going to get that opportunity again. So... Don't come home all the time. Like, come on, go to Bali or go to like Thailand. Have the best time of your life. But what, like, if you can, come home and do, do like an attachment, do electives. That's very, very important. Like, you don't have to be waiting till you have graduated to learn how to take blood. That's just terrible. Like, I hope nobody else ever has to go through that because that's just, it's bad. You know, it's better. Those are the foundations. That's the that's the that's things that year three students can do. This thing that that medical students, even first years, to be fair, in UB, can take blood like from the like from the get go. So, yeah, I just don't want to see that happen to any other China trained Chinese student, or any China trained person really, because even in English medium, you guys don't get that much exposure. I don't I can't speak very well for like Russia and Cuba obviously in terms of clinical skills because I don't know but I would assume that you also don't get as much exposure as you need to in terms of like practical skills. So electives, electives, electives. Botswana is very happy to 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 have you, especially as students. Maybe things will be difficult as interns, but as students, Sham, you just have to sign up. Okay, I don't know the procedure, actually let me not lie. But I know a lot of people who've applied and they've been able to do their electives in Botswana. The mistake that I made, I decided to, to be bougie, hey? And I went to GPH. Now, you have to remember, GPH is a private facility. I put in a private hospital. They understand the implications, okay? They have been trained to be aware that at any moment you could be facing a lawsuit. So nobody's really going to put you in the front line like that and allow you to be too experimental <laughs> like that because of course yeah they they they're just extra careful they're extra careful and the patients le bonnet they might be a little bit iffy but public hospitals shem shem like you'll have the time of your life if you're really willing to learn like you'll be very very engaged you'll be getting work you'll be learning how to do all sorts of procedures 
at your level and it's really going to be empowering for you it's really going to be empowering for you um the language of medicine ha <laughs> i remember my first morning report i just felt like everybody is so intelligent but that was just because i was never exposed there is an entire language of medicine literally i mean if you pick somebody from a completely different um space of work there's a specific word i was looking for then it left me and you put them in our morning reports in the morning i can tell you i can assure you 100 percent 80 percent of the time they cannot hear what we're saying that just proves to you that the medicine of language medical jargon is a language of its own like it's so the system, the way people present, the way you present. Also, you need to know how to present a patient and how to take notes, but I'll, I'll speak about that soon. The language of medicine is a language of its own, and you need to have heard it over and over again for it to stick. You need to have spoken it over and over again for it to stick, just like any other language. It's something that you need to exercise to become decent at. And this is something that we... I can clearly remember up to our very last exam, up to graduation exam, there was still stuff that we were translating, but even in English, it didn't make sense to us. Okay? We are translating from Chinese to English so we can understand, but even in English, it wasn't making sense to us. And that just shows you that we didn't understand in English because medicine in English is a language of its own. Okay? There is no way I could understand decorticate, you know? As just a normal human being like la the general knowledge la the guess there's no i can understand what to cut a kit means if i am not medically versed do you understand so the language of medicine is very important also you need to make sure you're reading english books you are in study group sessions with people that study in english you are following ppts in english the ppts must be terrible as well even if you're an english medium so maybe that's not your best bet but you need to make sure you're watching videos in english youtube youtube videos in english you're learning as much medical jargon as you can um because you don't want to be that intern who has to report a case to a specialist overnight and you don't even know what you're saying you're speaking in layman's terms the specialist doesn't understand the extent or the severity of your situation. They don't understand why you need them. They hang up on you or they just feel like, ah, this one is incompetent. Do you understand? So the language of medicine is very, even up to now, I am still learning some words. I'm still learning some, some terms that I didn't really, that I never knew, to be honest, um, post-graduation. So I spoke electives, I spoke language of medicine. History taking and reporting, that's something that you can learn. It's very quick to learn whilst you're already working. But of course, I think it's best to start early. So it's best to start early. There's a lot of books that speak in length about history taking, what you're looking for, how to ask, the fashion of asking open-ended questions, closed-ended questions, stuff like that. Um, I can clearly remember learning this in Chinese, but emphasis just wasn't placed. That's the thing with med school in chinese i cannot sit here and lie and say i didn't learn what i was supposed to learn stuff was in the curriculum they have a really good they have a good curriculum that's how their doctors learn and their doctors are really good but it's just a language thing do you understand the whole thing is just <laughs> because it's not in your language because it's not in a language you've spoken all your life there's just a delay in the learning process and a lot of things that you should actually emphasize on you end up just overlooking because your goal now is to pass your exams is to stay afloat is not to lose your scholarship and it's no longer the most fundamental purpose of school which is to learn and that is the biggest problem with studying in a foreign language that is the biggest the biggest problem so I can clearly remember, I remember the, the, the course was called communication skills and they did speak about like, I remember even in Chinese it was kai fang wen ti, uh, kai fang wen and guang fang wen, which meant like, yeah, whatever, I can't remember, but it meant like open-ended questions and closed, closed questions. So that would be stuff like asking a patient, maybe you're trying to establish that they have anemia, you can ask, how have you been feeling? That is an open-ended question. The patient can then tell you, I've been having a headache. Then closed-ended questions, have you been having 
dizziness, lightheadedness, easy fatigue, have you been bleeding spontaneously from anywhere? Now those are yes or no questions which we then call closed ended questions. So this is stuff that we may have had in our curriculum but we just never emphasized on. So that's, I was just saying this to say that's the topic, that those, that's the area that will teach you history taking. It's just something that you need to, you know, that's something you can definitely teach yourself. You can read, you can, you can Google, do a fast Google uh, search, you can YouTube. And then as you learn how to take history, then you know how to report. Say maybe in a morning report when you're reporting your overnight admissions or when you're calling to tell a specialist about a patient. Um, that's stuff that you can really just learn on the move. Um, at number seven, take Chinese internship very seriously um, if you can't come home. So now I know a lot of people have been successful in coming home for electives, but um, for a lot of people who are in the CSC scholarship, it's mandatory that you. It was mandatory that you stay in China for the internship. The internship is very, 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 very limited. You don't touch patients. Um, you probably touch one or two. I remember during my internship, the best, my best experience was during surgery because obviously the patients are unconscious. <laughs> that was the only time I got involved. Otherwise, it's very rare. It's very rare. You'll never get to do a VE. You'll never get to do an LP. You'll never get to even the best you can do. You can get to auscultate, especially because sometimes the patients will be fascinated that you're black and whatever. Um, but you'll never get to do too much. Like you'll get zero clinical skills. So especially in China, where they have, they're very serious about the multidisciplinary approach. Literally, there's what are they called? Flim flim. Should Google the word. But people who specifically, let me just Google it right now. People who specifically take blood, they have that kind of system in China. But I, I've heard it's also there in um, in in a lot of other first, in first world countries. Like specifically, you have people who specifically are just there to cannulate and take blood. So doctors don't have to do that. But that's not the case with us. Phlebotomists who do phlebotomy. Yes. <laughs> yeah but that is not something that you will you will learn in med school Chinese won't even bother teaching you because for them as I say specifically trained nurses nurses or phlebotomists phlebotomists are the ones who like are like focused in that area um, but Take your internship, so whatever you can gather, gather. Whatever you can gather, gather. But if you find yourself, because the situation with me at some point was, I just, I felt like I wasn't gaining a lot from internship, especially besides surgery. Like surgery was my best, 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 best rotation in China. I was involved, I felt needed, like I would actually be placed on schedule. Sometimes it'll be written that, okay, today the, Dr. Yoni is coming to like assist in this thyroidectomy because other doctors are there and there like we had actual roles which was really 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 empowering and that's the only good memory or good experience I had out of my medical internship in in China otherwise otherwise you just go it was so demoralizing I don't even know how my mental health was okay at that time actually I remember there was a time I was very, it was winter of 2017, yes, my time when I was really sad. I was really not in a good space because I just felt like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life, I don't know where I'm headed, I don't know, I don't know what's happening. That's around the same time I made that video for you guys, um, the first Med School in China upload that I have, because, yeah, I... I was just not sure like what's happening in Tota. I don't know what's happening. So internship in China, it's going to be very difficult. But if you can, just gather what you can gather. Take it seriously and try to do your best. But if you find yourself in a situation where you're not going, which is a situation I find myself in, there's times when I really... I went for like 90% of the time. But there's 10% times that I, I just didn't go. Um, during that time, I wish I had used the time to actually study, and I didn't. But that is really the best time you have because 
nobody is putting any pressure on you to be honest all you need out of that internship is like a few signatures on a book that you can get from anybody anytime so <laughs> that would be the perfect time to just study you have an allowance you don't have to be trying to work or do anything you have an allowance you're living in an apartment you're you know your life is good at this point way more relaxed no classes no nothing that's the best time to just make a, a, a schedule for yourself and just literally beat book like literally study like your life depends on it but i wish i'd made time i'd made use of that time but i didn't and that's a mistake i hope you guys won't repeat hmm. and i realized that a lot of the problem with not being able to study is not having the right schedule one and not having like you need to have a study plan that is so important you need to have you need to have a specific way of studying i remember when we were studying for our grad exams it's like when we got to our grad exams that's when we all just woke up which is so unfortunate like in my grad exam preparation that is when i started to feel like an actual doctor because we were really going in which was too little too late you know but yeah you, you need to have like a, a system your definition what exactly is appendicitis what exactly is appendicitis inflammation of the appendix then you need to go into anatomy okay like don't overlook those things where exactly because if you're going to operate on an appendicitis if it's perforated or whatever you need to know where where you're making your incision where are you going like what are you incising where do you expect to find the appendix is it behind the cecum on the stuff like that like it's just the whole thing so you need to make sure you understand your anatomy you understand your under anatomy make sure you, that you cover your um innovations vasculature don't just cover the position cover everything your sizes the whole bit and then you go into pathophysiology how exactly does the appendicitis happen how does, exactly does the inflammation happen um and then how does that tie into the signs and symptoms the clinical manifestations that you see why is there like disseminated generalized um, abdominal pain peritonitis all that stuff go deep understand but have it in a systemic form so you have your definition you have your anatomy you have your pathophysiology you have your signs and your symptoms you have your investigations how do you find it do you do your abdominal um ultrasound scan x-ray be beneficial in any way blah 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 then you go now into your management pharmacological management and surgical management if there's room for if there's um indication for surgery so just have that system and have it for like you know understand which topics you're going to go with first what your priorities are so i think my biggest um downfall was that i never had a study plan at least i didn't have an effective study plan so because of that I just really didn't have the best the best experience as um as a medical student which which is disheartening but I'm just lucky that you know the end point of my story was a good one you know that I finally that I got to my senses senses before it was too late and um yeah essentially so that's definitely a mistake that you guys shouldn't repeat study when you can study at any opportunity that you that you have especially now when you have the time because here you have no choice but to study but you'll have no time because now you actually have responsibilities now you're employed you're being paid you're on the clock you understand so the pressure is just like 10 times more now because there's somebody expecting you to have an answer believe me like you'll have nurses just ask you naka rbsk 1.8 what do i do okay <laughs> and you have to have an answer for them it's your responsibility it's your duty it's what you've been called for so this is take this very seriously um where was i use all your free time wisely i think i sort of spoke on that use english medium ppts blah 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 i spoke on that so my 10th and final point was fight and start your fight early um today it's funny it's not funny but yeah it's 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 quite a coincidence that i've been already meaning to film this video but today was my first day in my sub rotation which is neurosurgery and we were so fortunate to have um one of the mo's in that department just sit us down and give us a bit of an orientation what we need to know um and she was just literally motivating us so my intern partner is a russian trained uh, medical as well 
so she, she the lady who was speaking to us the lady who was giving us an orientation is actually china trained although she's studying in english but i was actually blown away to find out she's china trained anyway that's besides the point so she set us down and you know she took us through this whole thing she was giving us like pointers which is really amazing and at the end she just spoke to us about a whole lot of other stuff and she was just really really empowering us which is so inspiring i haven't been that inspired in a very long time very motivating but amongst a lot of things one of my takeaway messages was you come with a deficit by virtue of having trained in a foreign country um that is one of these big three or i don't have to <laughs> i don't have to specify by virtue of that it's unfortunate that by virtue of that we are at the bottom of the food chain you know you could have been a straight a star student in high school but by virtue of going to these universities it just drops you below the band but that doesn't have to be the end of your story that doesn't have to be that doesn't have to be it you know there is hope so she was basically saying you come with a deficit but you have to fight to bridge the gap those were her words and they it's um you know i've, I've gotten the same speech from a different doctor um who, who 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 was supervising me in a different rotation but she was from she was a chi um she was russian trained as well but she basically said the same thing she said you need to understand you know you always have the you always be at a disadvantage basically so you need to literally push yourself to exhaustion if that's what it takes to exhaustion if that's what it takes okay you have to push yourself Till you can no longer push yourself just so that you can bridge that gap so that will be my closing message for you guys whether you are in your final year you're you're about to graduate and you're about to come and work um go to your home country and work or if you're still a medical student you're studying in chinese i'm just saying if i have made it you can definitely make it so that's that's that and that's out of the way you'll graduate you will be an exceptional doctor at the very end but start fighting and start now so that you don't have to have that huge gap to bridge when you're already like employed you know start fighting and start now work hard have your ducks in a row avoid all the mistakes that i made um that i've spoken about throughout this video and yeah it can be done it's possible i've seen it through myself god has literally been so faithful like i could have never imagined I'm not, I'm not making this video to make myself look dumb, <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to make this video to expose myself or make myself look inferior or whatever, but it's just facts, that's just the experience that I had in medical school, which really wasn't the best experience and I cannot completely blame the system, the stuff that I could have done differently, that I hope you guys will take heed of and do differently for yourself so that you can become the best version um, that you can be. So thank you, Rega. <laughs> Thank you very much for for watching i've spoken so much i hope i can edit this video and make it short because yeah my videos are always so long but yes thank you for watching i'll see you guys in my next one and thank you bye